When I put that nose on, it gives me the permission to bring out the inner child. Residents bring out their inner child and the two of those talking together in, that, in the moment, I don't know, I think it transcends being a clown and being an old person. We go to another place and it's magic, it's pure magic. It's not just about making people laugh. It's about making that connection with people and building the relationship. It's more of a European clown. Sensitive clowning, uh, less loud and more one-on-one. -on -one. What's going on with you? Listening to the other person. Are they from Europe? Are they from Australia? What do they like? What do they enjoy in this world? Instead of asking them to step into our world, uh, we step into their world and after 80 or 90 years of living, there's so much there to explore, to discover. Backstroke, breaststroke, do the bichillas, tennis. It's great to have a laugh with a stranger, but it's really good to have a laugh with a friend. And I think that you need to develop a relationship with people to be able to go into all these other emotional areas. It's sort of, there's sort of a journey. You know, we start with connection, then we get rapport, then we get play, and then we get laughter. Play and laughter are, are core parts of being alive. And a clown can make you feel really, really important. You're trying to make a difference. You're trying to improve the quality of that person's life. You might do that with uh, humour, music, you might do that with reminiscence work, dancing. The reason why an elder clown employs different techniques for each resident is because there's no two people alike on this planet. We're all different, unique and beautiful in our own way. I can get three staff members dancing, joining in with the singing, doing ridiculous dancing and, and the residents can sit around a circle and absolutely, it can change the relationship that they have with that person. You know, you can do something very simple and bring a smile to a resident's face. Um, I've been using a, a small goat puppet, which has a, a major impact on most of the people I come in contact with. <laughs> Dawn, I love you. <laughs> can you believe it? A lot of people may think that you're infantilizing adults as a clown, but really it's the opposite of that. Clowns are willing to give power so people with dementia actually discover again that they have authority or they have wisdom. And I think it's really healthy if you are in a situation where you really are very powerless. To have those moments is, um, is very good for you. It's very good for their mental health. Maria, Maria, do you want a beer? Yes. You do? Well, I do. You do? How many? Well, it depends what people we are. Okay. I can't, I can't afford that much beer. You can't? Uh, not really. I don't know if I could buy that much beer. Then you better disappear. <laughs> if I can't get the beer, I'll have to disappear. Is that how it goes? Something like that. Okay, all right. Well, I'll see what I can do. I'll have to borrow the money. I thought we were friends, and now I think you just want me for my beer. I think that you're right. <laughs> it's very meaningful work, working as an elder clown. The impact it has on people's lives is just so, so beautiful. And one memory I've got, which will now go with me forever, I arrived late and I could hear this laughter. And I'm listening outside the door and then I opened it and I go in and my mother is laughing, tears pouring down her eye. The joy was magic. This great life that's been lived actually comes out of people. And so it's really a celebration of humanity right to the very, very end. <laughs>